Now, a few months back on What's New on Wheels, we reported on two new low-cost basic transportation imports. This Yugo GV from Yugoslavia and the Hyundai Excel from Korea. We had a chance since then to take them both for a long drive. We're glad to say that neither car came up short. But now that they're on the market, how tall will these newcomers stand in America's lot of imported cars? Judging by the initial sales of the Yugo GV anyway, fairly tall. In the East, dealers are selling their Yugos before the cars are even off the boat. The reason seems to be the Yugos advertised $3,990 base price. Our dealer test car, though, had a sticker of around $5,300 after add-ons, such as rust-proofing and undercoating. The only substantial extra was an AM-FM radio. The dash is stylish and attractive, though for instrumentation, you get just the essentials. A four-speed manual is the only available transmission. And let's hope you live in a cool climate, because there's no air conditioning offered. But cloth upholstery and carpeting are included in the base price, along with a rear wiper and defogger. And there's a fold-down rear seat, or sort of fold-down rear seat, since it doesn't fold all the way down. The Yugo uses what space it has well, though, and there is room for two back there. But all seat backs are a little thin. At only 1,800 pounds, the easy-to-handle front-drive Yugo carries most of its weight in the front. Hey, where do you want the Yugo? The whole car is based on Fiat components, all built in Yugoslavia. Under the hood is a 1.1-liter overhead cam four-cylinder, not unlike those engines Fiat once sent over in their own cars. However, Yugo mileage is unspectacular for its size at 25 city and 31 highway. Even with its tiny power plant, the Yugo did better than we expected in acceleration. Although a quarter mile time of 20.1 seconds at 69 is slow by today's standards. But a zero to 60 time of 16 seconds is comparable to most base import economy models. That still means though that you have to allow plenty of space for pulling onto an interstate. If you've ever driven a small Fiat, then the Yugo will feel familiar. You know the steering is heavy, but the car is fairly maneuverable. In tight maneuvers, though, the Yugo's front weight bias causes plow followed by a twitch of the tail, which shows up even more in a 55-mile-an-hour lane change. All told, the Yugo design is a bit dated, but it does have plenty of standard perks, like real working vent windows, that make it very attractive. And the fit and finish on our car was good. Of course, there's no way of knowing how reliable the Yugo will turn out to be. But if past Fiat durability is any guide, buyers shouldn't exactly expect it to last forever. However, the Yugo is backed by a full car warranty for one year, and a five-year warranty on the drivetrain is available. And if you understand the Yugo's limitations at the beginning, and can actually get one for a price near the advertised $39.90, then the little Yugo could be a viable everyday in-town commuter and a fine alternative to a used car. Our next new country import, the Hyundai Excel, has a suggested price range of $5,500 to $7,500. Any dealer markups aren't yet known. However, unlike the Yugoslavian Yugo, the Korean-made Hyundai is a brand new design. In addition to this four-door sedan, Hyundai will offer the XL and three- and five-door hatchback versions. All of these subcompacts should be available in three levels of trim. For a car this size, there's plenty of passenger room. And with the sedan's wide rear doors, getting in the back is easy. The rear windows roll all the way down, too, a feature some luxury cars don't even have. The Hyundai also has lots of little standard features. There's full carpeting and heat vents for the backseat passengers, as well as a locking glove box and a locking gas door. There's a dead pedal and lots of vents, also an inside trunk or hatch release and a rear window defogger. The XL can be had with one of three transmissions, a four-speed, five-speed, or a three-speed automatic. But there's no doubt that this is an economy car. If you're too frugal to order an option like cruise control, they still comment on your economic status by continuing to mark the non-functioning switch. And the spare tire cover is crude cardboard, although the sedan's trunk is large and opens all the way down to the bumper. By the way, standard tires are U.S.-made Goodyear Corsa GTs. 
Under the hood, there's a 1.5-liter overhead Cam 4 that was designed by Mitsubishi but built by Hyundai. Mitsubishi owns part of Hyundai, and much of this car, including the engine and suspension, is based on the Japanese Colt Mirage design. So, as you might expect, the Excel performs and feels about like a Japanese front-drive sedan. The ride may be a little softer, and the steering a little slower, but the Excel is very competent on the highway or in the city. Our overall impression? The Excel seems very solid, well-built, and finished, so we don't think Hyundai will have any trouble meeting their 100,000 car projected sales for this year. The fit and finish on our early production car was good, with no squeaks or rattles. Only the radio failed to work as advertised. Quality is so good on the Hyundai XL that Mitsubishi is planning to sell the car through its own dealers by the 1988 model year. So both the Hyundai XL and the Yugo GV are more than funny foreign flukes. They just may be the first successful wave of a new low-price import invasion.